Hey everyone and welcome to another update video for my home theater. So this I believe is update six or day six essentially. Um, obviously it's not day six. It's been quite a while since I last posted. Um, I did have quite a few scheduled videos. So quite a bit's actually changed since the last video. Update five was mostly acoustic as well as some other little bits and bobs. So we'll start with acoustic. So acoustic was completed fully for most of the room. Now I did leave some sections both at the top as well as at the bottom in order to tidy up some of the cabling as you probably would have already noticed in the video. The seating is actually laid out slightly differently at the moment. Um, this is ideally how I want to actually get it set once I've got my well some sort of cinema seating this is the ideal situation this particular row of seating wants to be in line with the center speaker um but yeah that's still something that i need to sort out um so yeah acoustic was completed for all of that wall all of the back wall as you can see all the way around completed all of that did the bottom section there wrapped it all the way around and also that that wall was done previously anyway i also added a few panels just on these these corners here as well so the big update since the last uh video is the atmos speakers so as you can see the atmos speakers are now in cabling still needs tidying up uh unfortunately i live in the uk so it's always raining so you can't get black cable trunking so I have to buy white and then spray it all. And unfortunately I had a little bit of a mishap in the corner because the piece that goes down wasn't sprayed. So I hung that, tried just tying it all in and unfortunately it was too heavy so I kind of ripped it off. So until that end piece goes back in, um, the cable will be dangling as it is. What I'll do now is I'll just put a little uh, insert in terms of the time lapse that I did. I only did a little bit of time lapse when we were doing the Atmos speakers so we'll have a look at that and then we'll come back okay so here you can see this is the first Atmos speaker that we actually worked on so initially we were just checking to see if there was any uh, sort of barriers in between where we were making the first hole and the second hole to be able to get the cable out we did decide to just take the cables straight uh, horizontally in this room and then just bring them out that was the easiest option save us having to cut through any beams and it keeps all the sort of structural integrity of the actual beams above uh, for the for the actual ceiling or the floor above this wasn't actually that hard it didn't take that long but um, initially the actual template that was provided by osd it's it was way too uh, tight so if if we'd cut out exactly to that um, it still wouldn't fit so we actually ended up having to go back and take out quite a bit of extra plaster just to get them to go in smoothly without us having to actually force it. So I didn't want it where they were literally having to be forced in and potentially damage one of the crossovers or anything. So this is how the room looked once we'd actually finished. So as you can see, there was mess everywhere, uh, cables dangling everywhere. Speakers weren't in uh, the front, well, the closest to the window speakers weren't in at this point. It did make a lot of mess, um, but thankfully it did clean up quite easily. I was mainly just worried about all the dust and everything going on the projector, uh, the actual screen. Here you can see one of the ones that we did install and yeah, everything needed a good wipe down uh, once we'd actually finished doing all the work. The Atmos speakers were installed. Now, originally you would have seen from the videos that Originally, I actually wanted a single sort of cutout just in that corner there. And I wanted all the cabling to come down and then run. And then the Marantz is going to end up in that corner eventually. Now, unfortunately, because all of my beams run this way, um, in order to do that, it would have been a lot of work. So the easiest option was basically wherever we had the cutout for the actual Atmos speakers, wherever we had some space in, I've literally just gone along with that and taken the cables out from that side. And that, that way I can just run a single trunk in all the way along, all the way down and then across. Yeah, so as you can see, where the speakers line up, the cable comes out and it goes straight into trunking. That little corner piece just there, it wasn't worth trying to do two sections there so that is a full three meter section um, which is the length that the trunking comes in so i'm just going to put a little bit of black sleeving on that similar to what i have down here so it will just hide the actual cable away so that that will be that section and then on this section it's the same thing so it's literally just coming out 
Um, the spray paint on the actual grills themselves isn't the best, so I have ordered some more matte black paint. This is a sort of plastic coat, uh, plasti dip type paint, um, and it just didn't want to stick very well. Um, so you can see on some of the edges, obviously I'm shining the light on it, which makes it a lot more obvious. Normally when you're in the room, you won't actually be able to notice it. So essentially what's happening is those, the, the cable for both of those runs that way, comes out, runs, and then joins with both of these. And then they end up there and then they run across. They'll run down and then we'll tie them all in and then everything will end up here. Now, as you can see, there is a heck of a lot of excess cable um, that I probably would have had enough to have actually completed the Atmos speakers. Initially, when I actually installed them, we did the two back ones. So we did that one and that one because I actually ran out of cable. Um, had I actually done all of this at the time when I was installing it, I could have actually got this more accurate. Initially, I did leave excess because I wanted to make sure that no matter where in the room I placed the AVR, I had enough excess cable. Even, even as it is, I don't think I'll actually trim that. I'll just tie it up and then basically tidy it up and just have it resting behind. Uh, what else? So... I've run Odyssey, uh, I have got the app, so I'll make a separate video on the app. Um, some people, well, a couple of uh, comments were left with regards to whether that's worthwhile buying or not. For me, just from the, the usage I've had out of it so far, just being able to see various different results, um, I think I think it probably is worth the price. I mean, if you're spending that much on, on a device like this, the app should be included, but obviously... You don't get much for free these days, so it's it's a paid extra. I think it was about eighteen, nineteen pounds. So as far as apps go, it's quite quite expensive, but it's probably worth it if you do run it and you want to actually save multiple different presets. The Marantz itself can only save two presets to it at any given time. So what you can do is obviously save all your various presets for different settings. And then whenever you want to use it, you can just upload it. It only takes maybe about a minute, less than a minute to actually upload. So you can literally just upload it as and when you need it. Um, it's very rare that anybody's going to need more than two presets. Um, I'm not using a zone two at the moment. Uh, potentially I could do in the future, but at the moment I'm not. So that could be one, one use case. And the other one would be, say, for example, if I wanted to run one room calibration with the curtains closed and one with them open, um, then that would also be different. And s similarly, Obviously, right now, I've got three rows of seating. Say, for example, I wanted to just turn this back into a sort of lounge lounge type setup. I could put that back there, put that back there, and then rerun uh, the calibration and then have it so then it performs best with that setup and then obviously have this sort of setup and um, run it again. And obviously, you've got two different presets that you can just quickly switch through, giving you the best, best audio in various different situations. One thing to note is obviously since I've added all of the acoustic, this room is extremely hot. So it warms up very, very quickly. And at the moment, obviously I've got the Marantz and the Hisense off as well. So when you've got everything turned on, it does warm up quite a bit in here. So I'll, I'll probably have to look at something something for that. Um, it is in the UK, so you could just open the windows, but obviously it's, it's the sound thing. You want you want to sound in the room as much as possible. Now on the ceiling, I might actually be using some of the foam sort of, ins uh, not insulation, but sort of acoustic mats that you get, um, sort of pyramid shaped. And that's literally just to kind of dullen some some of the, the shine that I'm getting off the, the ceiling as well, because obviously with the acoustic panels on the walls, this it's it's a much it's much less reflection that you actually get you'll be able to see how that's it's not really giving much of a shine whereas when it shines off the actual paint itself it is a lot more reflective even compared to the actual fibers on this so i'm hoping that absorbs some of the um some of the light reflection as well as i've i've never really liked this look and um, I'm hoping that the, the sort of acoustic foam will actually look slightly better. Um, what else? So we're nearly there. It's nearly there. Seating will be the last thing. So, um, I'm struggling to find something that will actually fit in the room dimensions to, with the sort of layout that I want. I want reclining sort of cinema style so sofas and the problem with most of those is you either get a two seater, which means that 
basically you can't seat as many people or you get a three seater and it's very close to the edges i want obviously because i've got that speaker mount there that one's not necessarily a problem because it doesn't really stick out much further than the radiator so that one's not really an issue but this one is where we're going to have our walkway and ideally i want i want to keep it with this much room where i can comfortably walk down here and not clash with the speaker itself whereas a lot of them are kind of pushing further than this so they're pushing about halfway past so i'll have to wait and see what what i actually do regarding that audio wise um i have run various tests I've, I've we've watched um yeah we started andor so we finished she hulk uh whilst we didn't have any atmos speakers and andor is the first first sort of series that we've started watching and even though I was kind of sat offset and we hadn't run uh, Odyssey or anything, nothing was sort of set up correctly at that time either. Um, they were simply just hooked up and everything was just left on whatever default they were on. Um, and it made a massive, massive difference. Being able to have the audio actually coming from the spots where the, the sound is supposed to be originated from makes such a big difference. So yeah, straight away... Um, Going back to the point when initially I said if I was going to do an audio upgrade, it would have to be somewhere that's miles better. And so far, it is performing miles better. Now, obviously, other people have also asked me about the sub. Um, I will have a video coming on the sub because obviously now that I've finally got it all set up and hooked up to this sort of system... I can finally give my opinion on this. I'm not going to have measurements and everything like that. There's plenty of other videos out there that do measurements. For me, it's all about how it actually performs in the room and not necessarily exactly what frequencies it's hitting at what volume and all, all the rest of the sort of measurement or the, t the technical side of things. I just want to keep this down to earth and just make it very simple for everybody so yeah i'll have a video coming on that i have also upgraded to the new apple tv 4k so i'll probably have a separate video on this before you actually see this one so that is the 2022 apple tv 4k and that actually has a very very good bonus for me in the sense that it's the very first apple tv that will actually switch off the hisense so previously, if I ever wanted to switch the system off, I would have to use external remote. So I would either have to use the Hisense remote, either use the app, or I would have to use a universal remote because you just couldn't, it, it wouldn't communicate correctly. The Apple TV 4K 2022 does actually switch off the Hisense. It switches off the whole system. So it's literally one button that you press. You do have to press and hold it, but it does turn off. And I've also kind of got used to the remote. Now, previous, um, I did do a review on this, the 2021 model last year, and I actually traded these remotes for the previous Siri remote with, with somebody that I knew because I actually preferred the trackpad and everything on the previous version. Initially, when I unboxed this, I didn't actually like it similarly again because I'm used to the trackpad. And I actually found I had one of these because I'd ordered it when I actually uh, ordered my 2021 uh, Apple TVs. And I had one of these lying about. So I thought I'll throw it on and see how it actually performs. And I think this is the, the sort of skin cover is was the sort of missing... Uh, missing factor in terms of actually making it so then I do actually like using this remote because it separates the buttons from the actual trackpad area that was the thing that was bugging me before because on the the previous one you had a large area on this you've literally just got this this surface area here that it works as a trackpad and by having this sort of ridge what it does is it separates all your buttons so you can actually find stuff in the dark without having to look. It does take a little bit of muscle memory remembering not to, because some of these are in different order to the old Siri remote. However, the thing is, because I've been using the universal remote for so long, um, it means that that muscle memory is kind of gone away. So I can learn this now fresh and yeah, I'm very, very happy with the new one. It is definitely faster. Like I noticed that straight away. Um, even compared to the previous previous Apple TV, which was was never slow. And it was only the 2021 model that I actually had, so I'd, I'd already previously upgraded. So I will be getting rid of the 2021 model. Um, I've just put it in a spare room for now, just to have it hooked up. But yeah, um, that's where we're at at the moment. Um, cabling and everything, I'm hoping to get done by the end of this week. 
and then the, uh, once the trunking's done, then that unit will get moved across, the sub will get dropped onto the side, the Marantz will go over to that side, and then some of this will get reorganized as well. I was hoping to try and get rid of that middle shelf so then the Marantz can go there, but I'm a little bit worried about the heat at the moment. If we look at this angle here, you can see that it does encroach on the speakers themselves. So eventually I will change either change the, the whole media console or get get rid of that shelf somehow and actually put it there um the aircom t10 for some reason was dead when it arrived um so i still need to sort that out so last friday was when we actually installed the atmos speakers so over the weekend i've literally just been messing around playing around with it doing tests all of the demos and everything that I run they're just so so impressive and now that i'm actually sat um not even perfectly because it's not perfectly in line it's actually sl slightly further back and according to dolby atmos spec you should actually be slightly either level or up to 110 degrees i think it was or 100 degrees forward so the, the according to dolby spec anyway your your side firing speakers should be behind you or level with you uh, rather than being in front of you so even right now it's not ideal but it's close enough to where um it's it's making a big big difference I am potentially considering moving these one panel back. That would get it further to the, and same thing with that, obviously. So move that one, one uh, in line with that one as well. And that potentially could actually resolve quite a few issues because at the moment, the problem I've got is if I want my main seating to be level in the center of the room, then I have to kind of sacrifice that seating. I do have the option of just leaving one row there and that can just get used whenever we have anybody else come down because normally there's only five of us, so th there will be enough seating for all five of us. But I want, obviously, my my seating position to be in the sweet spot where everything is tuned up and you're bang smack in the middle. Um, I would I was also considering building a riser for this back, back row because whatever happens, there will be seating here, whether it's this or something else. There probably won't be this, but um, there will definitely be seating here um but it's just with the door being right there i do have the option of point the door to open outwards but even still um your riser is going to have to stick out a little bit further and obviously come out here so i don't want nobody tripping over as they come into the room the other sort of much longer option would be to actually relocate the whole room put the screen on that side build a riser at the back of the room and then i can actually have a double stacked riser and have one row of seats, one row of seats, and then another row at the front with, once again, your main seating would probably be the middle row, um, just because of the height of the screen. Um, ideally, I don't really want to be doing that because that's quite a big, uh, quite a big job in terms of ripping everything out and also just relocating all the speakers as well because at the moment I've, I've got them as close to, if not perfect, in terms of Dolby Atmos spec. Um, according to Dolby Atmos spec, you're actually meant to have your Atmos speakers in line with the edge of your, um, your woofer essentially for your front, front sound stage and your rears are actually meant to be slightly inside. Now I didn't go inside. I, I went, I went level. So that speaker there is level with your front and the rear left is level with the front left. So I've gone more in, in line. Um, just because obviously those ones weren't initially meant to have been mounted under the screen, but obviously that's, that's one of the compromises I had to make. Um, similarly, again, these should ideally be level or slightly further behind. But yeah, this is, this is where we are at the moment. Uh, video is quite long now. So what I'll do is I'll wrap up now and hopefully by the time you see the next update, uh, things should be, should be looking a bit, bit, bit tidier. Obviously, the room has been a bit of a mess for quite a while. Um, so yeah, I want to try and get all this tidied up, get that front set up right, at least get it all tidied up and hopefully bring you guys closer to what the finished result is going to be. Anyway, obviously I will have more videos coming and it is every Mondays is home theater video kind of theme. So if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell. And I'd really appreciate it if you also give this video a thumbs up. And until the next one, thanks very much for watching.